All right, welcome to another episode of Farm DME. My name is Ty, and today we're talking about bridging anticoagulants. The, um, the purpose of bridging anticoagulants is when a patient's on warfarin and they need to have a procedure done. And in order to make sure that they don't bleed too much during the procedure, they want to have the patient on a drug with a short half-life that they can stop immediately before the procedure, perform the procedure, and then immediately get them started again to make sure that their INR doesn't get too low. So what we have here is a little protocol that I put together um, that will help kind of organize your thoughts when you're thinking about bridging anticoagulants. So the first thing is we're going to stop the warfarin five days before the scheduled surgery. And some things about warfarin is its full therapeutic effect takes about five to seven days. And it'll take about two to three days once you stop warfarin before the INR will drop below two, which is considered a, an acceptable level um, in terms of starting the low molecular weight uh, heparin, which is what we're gonna use to bridge. Um, so about five days before the scheduled sur surgery, we're gonna stop the warfarin. Um, if at high risk for thromboembolism, we're going to start the low molecular weight uh, heparin three days before the surgery or when the INR drops below two. Um, and then 24 hours before the surgery, we're going to stop the low molecular weight heparin. Um, you can also use unfractionated heparin, but I think most hospitals use low molecular weight heparin uh, before surgery. And then we're going to perform the surgery and then we'll restart the low molecular weight heparin within 48 to 72 hours after hemostasis has occurred. Um, for major surgery, we'll start restart in about 24 hours after hemostasis has occurred for minor surgeries. Um, you know, I put a couple stars around this one. If you restart too soon, you can increase the risk of bleeding. If you wait too long, the INR may not be therapeutic for the patient. Um, we're going to actually restart the warfarin in about 12 to 24 hours post-surgery. But again, it takes about five to seven days uh, for warfarin to reach its full therapeutic effect. Um, once the INR has reached the appropriate level for the patient, it could be anywhere from two to three. If it's a, a mechanical heart valve, it might be a little bit higher than that. That's when we can discontinue the, um, the heparin product. Uh, I put a couple alternatives down here. Um, if a patient has a history of HIT, you can use um, Argotraban. Um, I believe that the Desirudin is a popular product. Um, and then I put another little um, star here just to show that uh, unfractionated heparin to bridge patient with stage five uh, kidney disease. Uh, I did want to talk, take a couple of minutes here to uh, talk about warfarin itself. Um, so it's indicated for thromboembolic complications. Uh, stemming from AFib or um, valve replacement. And it's also indicated uh, after myocardial infarctions. Um, some common things that you want to make sure your patients know when they're taking warfarin is that it can lead to bleeding and you also want to make sure that the patient knows um, about the diet. Patients taking warfarin need to have a steady amount of vitamin K 
uh, in their diet. So it's okay if they eat a salad or a bowl of spinach, but they just need to make sure that they, you know, kind of stay steady. They don't eat too much salad one week and then not enough the next week because um, it will mess with their INR readings and their ability to anticoagulate. Um, it is a pregnancy category X. Um, there is a, a couple cases where it's pregnancy category D, um, but for the most part it's category X, but it is um, okay in breastfeeding. Um, in terms of drug interactions, uh, there's a slew of drug interactions. Uh, probably just, you know, one thing to kind of focus on would be that it's a uh, cytochrome P450. Um, 